Let us read this resource material from truthseeker.church about the fundamental principles of 1872 and versus the 1980-27 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist. Two different platforms. One is true, one is false. One is scriptural, one is from Rome. You decide which one you will obey and follow. The God of the Bible and the pioneers of 1872 fundamental principles, they have 25 fundamental principles based on 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Our Father in heaven, as I share this information to your people and to those who are seeking the truth, may, may your Holy Spirit continue to guide us, guide those who are honest and Searching the truth. I pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us um, consider this article from um, Truth Seeker that Church. The 1872 Fundamental Beliefs of Fundamental Principles versus, versus 1980 Fundamental Beliefs. As elsewhere stated, Seventh-day Adventists have no creed but the Bible, but they have but hold to certain well-defined points of faith for which they feel prepared to give a reason to every man, ask it them. The following propositions may be taken as a summary of the principal features of their religious faith, upon which there is, so far as we know, entire unanimity throughout the body. They believe that there is one God, a personal spiritual being, the creator of all things, omnipotent, omniscient, and eternal, infinite in wisdom, holiness, justice, goodness, truth, and mercy, and unchangeable, and everywhere present by his representative, the Holy Spirit. Psalm 139, verse 7, Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Number two, that there is one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal Father, the one by whom God created all things and by whom they do consist, that he took on him the nature and the seed of Abraham for the redemption of our fallen race, that he dwelt among men full of grace and truth, lived our example, died our sacrifice, was raised for our justification, ascended on high to be our only mediator in the sanctuary in heaven, where with his own blood he makes atonement for our sins, which atonement so far from being made on the cross, which was, but the offering of the sacrifice is the very last portion of his work as priest, according to the example of the Levitical, Levitical priesthood, which foreshadowed and prefigured the minister of our Lord in heaven. Leviticus 16, Hebrews 8, 4, 5, chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, etc. I'd like you to um, continue reading this, that the Holy Scriptures and the Old and New Testaments were given by inspiration of God, contain a full revelation of his will to the man, to man and are the only infallible of rule in faith and practice. The founding fathers of our faith, the pioneers of the real Seventh-day Adventist Church, 1815-1930, Joseph Bates, James White, Sister Ellen G. White, Hiram Midson, Joseph, Joseph Harvey Wagner, John Byington, Joseph Presby, George Storrs, John Andrews, Roswell F. Petrell, Maret Cornell, John G. Matheson, Uriah Smith, Thomas Preble, Owen Crozier, W. C. K. Gage, George Butler, Walcott, Little John, Stephen Haskell, John Loughborough. John Loughborough has this to say, John Norton Loughborough. The first step of apostasy is to set up a creed, telling us what we shall believe. The second is to make that creed a test of fellowship. The third is to try members by that creed. The fourth, to denounce as heretics those who do not believe that creed. And fifth, to commence persecution, persecution against such. I plead that we are not turning after the churches in any unwarranted sense in the step proposed. John Norton Loughborough, Review and Herald, October 8, 1861. Early Adventism, the pioneers' doctrines were established early and held firm through Sister White's lifetime. Believe in God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Spirit of God, also referred to as the Holy Spirit. We identify God as one being. Jesus is recognized as having his own being, separate from God, and is called the Son of the Eternal Father. We also refer to Jesus as the literal begotten Son, just like in the Bible, that Christ at the beginning, sometime in eternity past. The Father and the Son was a real relationship and, the, and were two beings. The Father, the Holy Spirit did not have a separate definition away from the Father. From eternity, there was a complete unity between the Father and the Son. 
They were two, yet a little short of being identical. Two in individuality, yet one in spirit and heart and character. Unwhite, the youth instructor, December 16, 1897, page 310. A complete offering has been made for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Not a son by creation, as were the angels, nor, nor a son by adoption, as is the forgiven sinner but a son begot in the express image of the Father's person in all the brightness of his majesty, glory, one equal with God in authority, dignity, and divine perfection. In him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ellen White, Signs of the Times, May 30th, May 1895, Christ, our complete salvation. The eternal Father, the unchangeable one, gave his only begotten Son, tore from his bosom, him who was made in the express image of his person, and sent down to earth to reveal how greatly the love he loved mankind. Alan G. White, Review and Herald, 9th July 1895, The Duty of the Minister and the People. We will read the next few statements next time. May God the Father and His only begotten divine Son be gracious to you and be merciful. I pray. Amen. <laughs>